Welcome to this series all about using Adobe After Effects for the first time. Today we're going to be looking at keyframes. Keyframes is a handover term from the days of hand-drawn animation. Senior artists would draw the keyframes for a cartoon, then the junior guys would have to fill in the in-between frames. In After Effects we're the senior guys and AE does the in-betweening. Here I am in After Effects CC, you can download this project from the link in the description below. I've grabbed a picture of a road from Pixabay and I've added a picture of a purple circle, which is going to be my ball. If you're not sure what's going on, check out adding video. Although this time I'm using images instead of videos, but it's the same principle. Let's expand the ball layers options using this arrow to twirl them down. The transform settings show me my anchor point, effectively the center of mass, where all coordinates and rotations and scale are based from. Then I have its position property. This shows me where within the comps window it is. The scale, as you can see, I've scaled it down to about 40% of its original size. The layer's rotation, and finally its opacity, or how transparent the layer is. Next to each property is a stopwatch. This is how we start setting keyframes. I'm going to have the ball move in from the side and stop in its present location. To do that, let's move the current time indicator to about 4 seconds in, and now click on the position stopwatch. Do you see what's happened? There's a diamond icon on the timeline. That's a keyframe. The stopwatch is lit blue, and there's this triangle circle triangle appeared. These controls let me jump from keyframe to keyframe. Now let's move the current time indicator back to zero, and then click and drag the ball off screen. You can hold down the shift key to drag it in the X direction only. Do you see the second keyframe has appeared on the timeline? Hit zero on the keypad to view your animation. Okay, not exactly spectacular. Let's see if we can't improve this. Balls very rarely stop dead, they normally slow down first. Right click on your final keyframe and using the pop-up menu go to keyframe assistant, easy ease in. See how the keyframe has changed? The several different keyframe icons, this one indicates easy ease in. Now, play back your animation again using zero. It's a little hard to see the difference, but take a look at this screen. I've got both types of keyframes on different layers. Let's take a closer look at what's happening. Next to the position property stopwatch is a little graph icon. Setting that option adds the position property to the speed graph, which you can activate here. The red line shows the ball's X position and how it changes over time. The green line is the Y position, which doesn't change, and the white line shows the velocity of the ball. If you're really comfortable with editing curves, then if you right click on a blank space within the graph to change the acceleration of the ball by choosing Edit Speed Graph. You can then adjust the shape of the white line using the yellow handles. In this version of the comp, I've replaced the purple ball with a basketball. And when I play the same animation, it looks really odd. That's because we'd expect the ball to roll. Now there's various methods of using expressions we can get After Effects to work this out for us. But for today, I'm just going to do it by hand. Use the keyframe controls to set the current time marker to the final position keyframe, and set a stopwatch for rotation. Now, if we go back to zero seconds, the ball is off screen. That's not that big a deal. If you hold space, you could drag the composition's view to the right and see where the ball ended up. And now you can see the outline for the layer. Using the zoom controls will get it recentered for you. Another option is to move the time forward until you can see the ball again, and now you can add rotation. You can click drag the angle, or the multiplier, or you can use the rotation tool to rotate the image, whichever method you're comfortable with, and that will set a new keyframe for the ball's rotation. Yeah, we need to work on that. Firstly, we can drag the first rotation keyframe around on the timeline. So let's set it to zero. That takes care of that initial skid. And now let's use easy ease again on the second keyframe. 
you can play around with that speed graph again to try to get it looking right. So it's not perfect, but then neither is reality. Having said that, if you download the project, there's a fifth comp which uses mathematics to control the rotation based on position. We'll cover expressions later on, I promise. So far, we've animated the ball to move in a straight line between two points. But what if we wanted to bounce off another object or roll in a curve? Here's another comp. This time I have the ball keyframe to travel from A to B. Now I want to have it pass through C. So I could go to the halfway point on the comp and just drag the ball up to C. Note how the motion path changes. If you're not seeing the motion path, make sure you've checked the toggle mask and shape path visibility button. And if your path is now two straight lines, go to edit, preferences, general, and uncheck default spatial interpolation to linear. So, assuming your path looks like mine, let's note a couple of features. The spacing of these dots indicates timing. The further apart they are, the faster the layer will move between them. If I drag the keyframe closer to the start, notice how they bunch up after C and stretch out before C. Also, take a look at the shape of the curve. These Bezier handles will let me change that, although that can take a bit of practice. Now, the trouble we have here is that there is a slowdown as the ball reaches C, but before it continues to B. Let's get rid of the keyframe at C and instead use those Bezier handles at A and B to create the curve. So I'll delete all the keyframes. I can do that by unchecking the position stopwatch. And now I'll set my A and B keyframes. And now, just using the handles, I can have the ball travel through C without needing a keyframe. which comes in really handy if I want to speed up the whole animation by moving the B keyframe closer to the start. And that's it for now. I think there's a lot to take in there if you've never used keyframes before. Am I going too fast or too slow? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like what I do, share it with your friends. Before the next video, try animating the ball to drop down from the sky and bounce back up. Maybe animate its scale so it squashes on impact and then rebounds to its normal shape. Maybe add a second ball coming from the other direction. Go nuts!